Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Recently I was watching YouTube and in my recommended watch list I popped up a Fusion 360 tutorial from a user in a channel I had never seen before. I saw the preview of the part that you see on my screen right now and I decided to uh, watch the tutorial to see how another user might construct a part like that. So after I watched it, I thought I would redo this tutorial using some of the methodology that I might use to make a part like this to give users just a different perspective on how to uh, draw the same part. Now I've already uh, emailed MJ and let him know that I was gonna redo this and he was pretty cool with it. And so you should all look down in the comments down below in the description for this video and I've got a link to his channel along uh, with the link to this video and in the link to the video is a data set that you can look at. One of the things you might notice about this data set is that it's first angle projection instead of third angle projection. So things uh, are maybe the top view is below the, the front view and the right view is to the left of the front view. So just a different way of looking at things, but I don't think you'll struggle with it too much once you realize that part. So with that, let's jump in and look at how I'm going to do it the way that he modeled the part first, and then I'm going to change it up and show you how I might model this and some of the decisions on why I make those choices that I do. So I'll start out the same way that he did by creating a sketch up on the top plane, and he starts with a two-point rectangle. I almost never do this. I'm going to put the dimensions on this to start out with. Uh, 44 in that direction, and it's 108 long. So go ahead and hit on that. The main reasons I don't like to do this is whenever I can, I make use of the origin planes for symmetry, patterns, mirrors, things like that. So if I can get away with it, I want to start my design mirrored around the origin if it makes sense to do so. The next thing that he does is he adds some fillets to round the end. So I'm just going to start the fillet command and click on that edge and that edge and that edge and that edge. And it's going to be half of the 44, so I'm going to put a radius on there of 22, and I'm going to hit enter. And Fusion's going to kind of complain about that. Next thing you're going to note is that my sketch turns blue instead of being black anymore. And if I grab one of these arcs and drag it, you can see that Fusion's kind of broken this up in a way that uh, I'm not a big fan of, so I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to leave it for now. And then the next thing that he does is he draws a two-point rectangle again kind of drags that out and this is going to be 36 long I'm going to hit the tab button to get to the other field oh I, I did it backwards but we'll just flip that back it's supposed to be 18 this way and tab 36 so there's our rectangle I'm going to move this a little bit closer in a position where it's finally going to go and then he again comes and grabs the fillet command and he clicks on a couple of the edges and two more edges a couple more edges and as he goes, he thinks that he misses two in the selection, but he doesn't. It just, just seems to be sort of an issue with the Fusion Sketch Engine. I'm going to put a radius on there of 9 millimeters, And you can see uh, Fusion doesn't like that in my case sometimes. So I'm going to go back and try to put that at 9 millimeters. I'm going to have to go just a little bit smaller than that. I'm going to call this 8.9 just for the basis of the tutorial. And then... Um, it missed mine just like it missed his, so I'm gonna go back and do that again, and I'm gonna set that to 8.9. Remember, this is supposed to be nine millimeters, but oftentimes when I tried to make it nine, Fusion just wouldn't do it in this particular sketch. Uh, another thing that he does is he starts the line command, and he does a construction, and he goes kind of from center to center. And you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Fusion's doing something odd here by putting two little uh, points in there instead. But then he dimensions from the edge to the construction circle and he makes that dimension half of the 44. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 22 and lock that in. And then the, the last dimension that he does is he just dimensions over this edge and I think this comes out to be something like 68. You'll have to look at the print to get the exact dimensions. I'm just kind of going off of memory. And then in the drawing, another thing that he does is he makes a rectangle. I don't want this to be construction now. I'm going to check to turn that off. And he makes this uh, rectangle be 11 millimeters high. I'll hit the tab button and 48 millimeters wide. And he does that one more time. So we'll come up here. And again, we'll make it 11 tab 48. And there's uh, the basis for his drawing. I'm going to finish the sketch. He then comes and extrudes all 
this up 15 millimeters. So that's good. And then he goes back to the sketches folder, turns the sketch on, and then now we can long press and hold and get to these two profiles that are in the bottom of our sketch. We can pull these up and these end up being, gotta find it in my, uh, my drawing, 61 millimeters. I got a foot mark there, 61 millimeters, and I want that to be a join. And I'll go ahead and hit okay. I can turn that sketch off and we're starting to get to the bases of the part. Uh, the next thing he does is he puts a sketch here and then he draws a construction line and gives it some dimension and I didn't do it as construction so I'm just going to click on it and go turn that to be construction and then he draws out a circle and makes everything connect um, onto the drawing. Again, I don't have this. Uh, let's see, this should be... 48, I believe, or 24. And then we could do something like tangent here. And then he came back and he trimmed it off on the bottom side. And then I'm just going to finish the sketch. Oh, I'm going to do one more thing. He drew a circle on this as well. So he drew a circle at the center with a diameter of 24. Finish that sketch. And then he came and he just extruded the different regions. And I'm going to pull all those through. And for the distance, I'm going to say all. Now on mine, I made sure to add the tangent constraint so I don't get the little flats that you might see on his version that he did. If you take a look, you'll see that the, the two arcs aren't quite the right radius and tangent. And he gets just a tiny little flat across the top. Maybe I'll put a little image up there so you can see what I mean. But anyway, there's, there's his version of the part basically done. Now let's hop over and do a different file and see how I might go about doing this. So I'm going to start out the same way. I'm going to put a sketch on the top face. But instead of using a two-point rectangle, I'm going to start out by using the center point rectangle. I'm going to anchor to the origin. And I'm going to do my 44 millimeters wide and tab 108 millimeters long. And that's all I'm gonna do for my first sketch. I'm gonna finish the sketch and I'm gonna extrude that up 15 millimeters. Next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna radius off the, the end and I'm gonna do that a different way. So I'm gonna use the fillet command and I'm gonna do the full round fillet option. And the way that it works is I click on a face and depending on where your mouse might be, you see if I'm more in the middle, it's gonna pick the top and the bottom edge. As I get more towards the left, it picks the face and the two adjacent edges. So when I click on that, I get a full round fillet. I like this because if I change the width of this extrusion, this full round fillet will automatically update. Next thing I'm gonna do is work on that slot. So I'm gonna put a sketch on the top face and I'm actually gonna use the slot command to do this and I'll use the center to center slot for this. Now, if I'm a little careful, I can eventually find the I can make it concentric with the outer arc, which if you look at the math on the print, that's what that works out to be. So I'm just going to click, uh, drag out, click again, and then I can kind of drag out a size. Now I can dimension this, and according to the print, the center to center distance on this construction line is 18 millimeters. And it has a width of 18, so I can either click on these two lines and give it, I'll show you what that would look like, a vertical distance of 18 or I could use the dimension command, click on that radius, right click and say I want a diameter and say I want a diameter of 18 millimeters. And there I get a fully dimensioned slot feature that I really don't have to trim, it's pretty clean. I'll say finish my sketch and now I'll extrude this region and I'm just gonna pull that all the way through and then for the distance, I'm gonna say all. For the two little extrusions that you might call them the ears or whatever. Um, I could have put those in the first sketch and shared them. I could put them on the top face and just do the math minus the 15. Or I could put them on the bottom face and extrude them up the same way. I'm just gonna put one sketch on the top face and draw a two point rectangle. And now I will just do a width of 11 and a, I'm sorry, a height of 11 and a width of 48. And there's my size. I can finish my sketch. And then I can either do uh, 61 minus 15, or I could make Fusion do the math for me as well, where I could say I want this to be 61 millimeters minus the 15 that I already have, and go ahead and hit OK. 
Instead of using the sketch to try to trim all this, I am again gonna use my full round fillet, so it's activated. So if I click on that face, I just need to get it so it shows me my two outer walls right there. There it gives me my perfect uh, full round fillet. I'll go ahead and hit okay. And now to punch the hole in there, I'm gonna use the hole command. I'm gonna click kind of offset from the center and then I'm gonna drag this blue dot until it lands on the white dot so it lets me know I'm concentric. I can say I want this to go all the way through no matter what. And for a diameter, I'm gonna set this to be 24 millimeters and I'll hit okay. To get the other side now, I simply have to come up and do the mirror command. I wanna mirror features and the features are gonna be the hole, the full round fillet and the extrusion. And the reason I use the center point rectangle in the very beginning is now when I select my mirror plane, I can go ahead and click on that face right there. It mirrors everything to the other side. I hit okay. And the design is done. Some of the things that I like about this design now using this method is if I were to come back to the original base extrusion and I edit the sketch and I change this dimension to be 48 and I hit enter, when I finish my sketch, everything updates. The front fillet updates, the mirror of the two uh, items, the two little ears updates, everything updates along the way. If I come back to the original one that I did and I go and I edit my base extrusion and I change this dimension to be 48 and I hit enter, now we'll see is instead of getting that perfect full round fillet in the front, I've got a flat going across there. So I'm gonna have to also remember to go to my sketch fillets and change these to be uh, 24. So I have to update more things. Uh, it changes the location of other things like the slot. So it just leaves me a little bit more work. So anyway, I'd like to thank MJ for putting the tutorial up, trying to help some new users. And hopefully you guys got something out of the way that I might go about drawing this very same part and the decisions that I might use and what rectangle tools or what fillet tools or what construction shapes like the slot I might do to come up with the same shape. If you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, if you have a different way you'd like to draw this part, we'd love to see that as well. And as always, thanks for watching.